Hi friends, hello and welcome to the last 90 days to CAT. In the last few parts, we've done installments, expressing number as sum of perfect squares and difference of perfect squares. And in this part, we are talking about one very, very important aspect for CAT, which is remainders. So we'll be covering eight key topics, which includes basic remainder theorem, negative remainders, cyclicity, Euler's theorem, Fermat's theorem, Wilson's theorem, Chinese remainder theorem and binomial theorem. So everything that is required from CAT standpoint. We'll do some really good examples and we'll have a very clear explanation. By the end of this video, your remainders topic should be complete. So let's begin with the first part. The first thing, which is basic remainder theorem. Let's say in this case, 1531 into 1533 into 1539 divided by 13. So what basic remainder theorem says is that when you have numerators in multiple, what you should do is you should take individual remainder. So 1531 divided by 13, 1 times 13, 2 and 3, 1 times 13, 101, 7 times 91. So remainder here is 10. Here the remainder must be 12. 1534 must be divisible. So 1539 must give you 5. Now just multiply the remainders. What do you get? 600. Also remember that the final remainder must be smaller than the divisor. So this is the divisor. Now if this is not smaller, you divide it once again. So if you divide 600 by 13, 4 times is 52, 8, 0, 6 times is 78. So remainder is 2. So what is the answer here? The answer is 2. All right. So let's have a look at negative remainders, an important concept. 37 divided by 5. What is the remainder generally? The remainder generally is 2. How do you get it? The multiple, which is, you know, just less than 37 is 35. So what is the difference between 37 and 35? That is 2, which is your remainder. Now, if you extend this concept, instead of taking the previous multiple, if I take the next multiple, the previous next multiple was 35. What is the next multiple? That is 40. If I take the difference of this number with 40, that gives me minus 3. So this is the concept of negative remainder. It is useful in solving a few questions, makes the process a little faster. One thing that you should always remember is positive remainder minus negative remainder is equal to divisor. So if you don't calculate it correctly in the first few times, you can remember this. For example, in this case, positive remainder was 2, negative remainder was minus 3. What is 2 minus minus 3 equal to 5, which is the divisor in this case, right? Let us try and test it. Same question as the last time, but let's see how the negative remainder can make it faster. Now, if you see 1534 is the next multiple, which is divisible with respect to the next multiple, which is 1534. This will give us minus three. This will give us minus one and this will give us five. So let's see minus three into minus one is plus three into five is 15. Now the remainder is clearly two. So we have saved one step in the last problem. If you've seen, we had to divide 600 by 13, right? Which would take you some additional time. But here you don't have to do that also. You get the answer quickly. So that is how negative remainder can make problems easier. Why did I not take a negative here also? I could have taken the negative here also, in which case they would have been become minus eight. So then what would be the case? If in this case you will see minus three into minus one into minus eight is minus 24. Now, if you have a look at minus 24, right? You can say that this is same as minus 11. And minus 11 can again be converted. So positive remainder minus negative remainder is equal to divisor. If you use this, you will get the positive remainder as plus two. So if I take another negative, I'll have to transpose it from negative to positive, which will take additional time. So what we should do, we should try and take the negative remainders in pairs so that the signs cancel out. If you take it in pairs, the signs will cancel out and you don't have to transpose it from negative remainder to positive remainder because in the end you have to give positive remainder as the final answer. Negative remainder is used for processing. The final answer will always be a positive remainder. Next part is cyclicity. Again, a very, very interesting concept. Generally, it helps you find out the last digit. Okay. In some cases can help you find last two digits also. What is any number divided by 10? What is the remainder? The remainder is the last digit, right? 
Any number divided by 100, what is the remainder? Last two digits. So what is cyclicity all about? Let us take a very simple number 2. The proposition here is that every number, you know, takes some power. Okay, and you keep increasing this power, you know, starts giving you a pattern to the last digit or to the second last digit. Let's see. 2 to the power 1 is 2. 2 to the power 2, last digit is 4. 2 to the power 3, last digit is 8. 2 to the power 4, last digit is 6. Again, 2 to the power 5, last digit is 2. 2 to the power 6, last digit is 4. So if you see this 2, 4, 8, 6, 2, 4, 8, 6 will keep on repeating. The period of this cycle is 4. Now, if I have to calculate any number, for example, let's say if I have to calculate 2 to the power 2000 and divided by 10, what is the remainder? Think about it. You have a period of 4 here. Every time you get 2 to the power 4, you get 6 as the answer. Here the, here the power is also divisible by 4. So then what should be the answer? The answer should be 6, right? So you can see for some of these numbers, for 2, the period is 4. Similarly, for 3 also, period is 4 and the digits repeat as 3, 9, 7, 1. Let's say we have to calculate 7 to the power 3001 divided by 10 and remainder. Effectively same as the last digit. We have to calculate the last digit here. So in case of 7 also, the period is 4. Last digits repeat as 7, 9, 3 and 1. So if I just divide this number, this power by the period and take a remainder. So if 3001 is divided by 4, the remainder is equal to 1. So this will be same as 7 to the power 1, which is 7. Let's say I have 793 raised to the power 333. If I'm calculating the last digit, the other numbers are not relevant. Only the last digit is relevant and the power is relevant. So 333, three, three. here again, for 3 also the period is 4. All I have to do is divide this number by 4 and take a remainder. So if I divide this number and take a remainder, dividing by 4, only last two digits are important. Here, if you see, the remainder will be 1. The last digit will be same as 3 to the power 1, which is 3. I hope the concept of cyclicity is clear. So you can find out the last digit in any of the numbers raised to any power. Talking about last two digits, in some of the numbers, last two digits also form a pattern. For example, 7 to the power 1 will give you 7, last two digits as 0, 7. 7 to the power 2 will give you as 49, 7 to the power 3 will give you as 43, 7 to the power 4 will give you as 0, 1. Right? So with 7, this is the pattern of last two digits. Now you can calculate here also a period of 4 is there. So 7 to the power 3001. Period is 4 divided by 4, remainder is 1. So what is 7 to the power 1? Last two digits is. So what is an Euler's theorem? Let's understand Euler's theorem first and subsequently we'll understand Fermat's also. These are quite similar and hence I have presented them together. Before understanding Euler's theorem, let's understand Euler's number. What is Euler's number? Let's take a very simple example. Let's take 12. How many numbers before 12 are co-prime with 12? What is co-prime? When two numbers give you an HCF of 1, they are called co-prime numbers. Example, let's say 5 and 7 or let's say 64 and 27. These numbers have nothing in common except 1. Do we require both the numbers to be prime numbers? The answer is no. For example, in this case, 64 is not a prime number. 27 is not a prime number. Now, coming back to our definition of Euler's, Euler's number, how many numbers before 12? are co-prime with 12. Basically what you have to check, how many numbers will give you an HCF of 1 with 12. So 1 will definitely give you 1, 2 will not give you 1, 3 will not give you 1, 4 will not give you 1, 5 will give you, 6 will not give you 1, 7 will give you, 8 will not give you 1, 9 will not give you 1, 10 will not give you 1, 11 will give you. So there are 4 numbers before 12, 4 natural numbers before 12, which will be co-prime with 12. So the Euler number for 12, Okay, or some people call it Euler's number also. So Euler's of 12 is 4. So Euler number of 12 is 4, right? So we can't keep calculating Euler's number like this. For example, what if I get a big number? I can't, you know, write all the numbers and then select a few, reject a few. So what is the way to calculate? Let's take 96. 96 is 2 to the power 5 into 3 to the power 1. So what you have to do is convert any number into the prime numbers or prime factors. All you have to do to calculate Euler number, Euler of 96 will be 96 into 
वन माइनस वन बाई फर्स्ट प्राइम नंबर इज टू इंटू वन माइनस वन बाई सेकेंड प्राइम नंबर इज थ्री सो नाइन्टी सिक्स इंटू वन बाई टू इंटू टू बाई थ्री दिस बिकम्स थर्टी टू सो यूलर्स नंबर ऑफ नाइन्टी सिक्स इज थर्टी टू ओके सो बेसिकली बिफोर नाइन्टी सिक्स देर आर थर्टी टू नंबर विच आर को प्राइम विथ नाइन्टी सिक्स सो इफ यू एक्सप्रेस एनी नंबर एज लेट्स ए प्राइम नंबर पी रेज टू द पावर ए प्राइम नंबर क्यू रेज टू द पावर बी प्राइम नंबर आर रेज टू द पावर सी देन द यूलर नंबर ऑफ एन विल बी एन इन टू वन माइनस वन बाई फर्स्ट प्राइम नंबर पी वन माइनस वन बाई सेकेंड प्राइम नंबर क्यू इन टू वन माइनस वन बाई थर्ड प्राइम नंबर आर दिस इज द वे टू कैलकुलेट द यूलर्स नंबर सो यू कैन सी हियर फॉर ट्वेंटी फोर वी कैन राइट इट एज टू टू द पावर एट इंटू थ्री ऑल यू केयर अबाउट इज यू नो दीज नंबर सो ट्वेंटी फोर इंटू वन माइनस वन बाई टू इज वन बाई टू वन माइनस वन बाई थ्री इज टू बाई थ्री कैंसल्ड आउट सो वॉट्स द यूलर्स नंबर एट नाउ वंस यू अंडरस्टूड द यूलर्स नंबर यू कैन अप्लाई द यूलर्स थियरम सो वॉट इज यूलर्स थियरम वेन एवर यू हैव पी अपॉन क्यू वेर बोथ पी एंड क्यू आर को प्राइम इन द पावर ऑफ पी यू हैव एनी मल्टीपल ऑफ यूलर ऑफ क्यू देन द रिमाइंडर इज स्ट्रेट अवे वन लेट से आई हैव ट्वेंटी थ्री हियर आई हैव सेवेंटीन हियर एंड हियर आई हैव थर्टी टू सो ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड सेवेंटीन आर को प्राइम द एच सी एफ इज वन दैट्स द फर्स्ट क्राइटेरिया टू बी सेटिस्फाइड सेकेंड वॉट इज द यूलर्स नंबर ऑफ सेवेंटीन सिक्सटीन डू आई हैव अ मल्टीपल ऑफ सिक्सटीन हियर येस दिस इज सिक्सटीन इन टू टू द रिमाइंडर बिकम्स वन वन ट्वेंटी वन टू द पावर वन ट्वेंटी वन रेस टू द पावर वन फोर्टी फोर क्लियरली वन ट्वेंटी वन इज इलेवन स्क्वायर वन फोर्टी फोर इज ट्वेल्व स्क्वायर दीज आर को प्राइम नंबर वन फोर्टी फोर इफ आई हाउ डू आई कैलकुलेट क्विकली द यूलर्स नंबर सो वन फोर्टी फोर इज नथिंग बट ट्वेल्व स्क्वायर सो बिकम्स टू टू द पावर फोर इंटू थ्री टू द पावर टू सिक्सटीन इंटू नाइन नाउ वन फोर्टी फोर इंटू वन माइनस वन बाई टू इंटू वन माइनस वन बाई थ्री सो दिस बिकम्स वन फोर्टी फोर इंटू वन बाई टू इंटू टू बाई थ्री दिस कैंसल दिस कैंसल फोर्टी एट नाउ द यूलर्स नंबर ऑफ वन फोर्टी फोर इज फोर्टी एट हाउ कैन आई एक्सप्रेस इट इन सच अ मैनर दैट आई कैन गेट सम मल्टीपल ऑफ फोर्टी एट और सम नंबर क्लोज टू द मल्टीपल ऑफ फोर्टी एट सो आई कैन राइट वन ट्वेंटी वन एज इलेवन स्क्वायर दिस कैन बी रिटन एज इलेवन स्क्वायर so this complete number can be written as 11 into 2 to, into 121 remember a to the power m to the power n is a to the power m into n this becomes 11 to the power 242 i can write this as 11 to the power 240 into 11 to the power 2 here 11 and 144 are coprime and euler's number of 144 is 48 and 240 is a multiple of 48 so the remainder in this case will be 1 And eleven square is what remains, which is anyways less than one forty four. So the final remainder here is one twenty one. Let's check this out. Seventy seven to the power sixteen divided by seventeen. This is a similar question to the example. So seventeen and seventy seven are co prime. Euler's number of seventeen is sixteen. So the remainder here is one. Now have a look at Fermat's theorem. Fermat's is quite similar to Euler's. Okay, if you understood Euler's. you can you know you can even skip formats okay it's it's that easy and it's very similar let's have a look at this any number raised to the power p minus 1 divided by p the remainder is 1 for any prime number the euler number is prime minus 1 right so here if you have p p minus 1 is nothing but the euler number okay so similar questions can be solved by eulers and formats for example let's have a look at this 77 Raised to the power sixteen divided by seventeen. Seventeen is a prime number, right? Seventy-seven and seventeen are co-prime, and here I have p minus one, which is this prime number minus one. So remainder is one. Talking about Wilson's theorem, again very very interesting. P minus one factorial mod p. So sixteen factorial by seventeen. The remainder is p minus one, which is sixteen. In negative remainder, you can write it as minus one, right? Positive remainder minus negative remainder is equal to divisor. So 16 minus minus 1 is equal to 17, which is the divisor here. That's the first part of Wilson's theorem. Second part of Wilson's theorem talks about p minus 2 factorial. So if I have 17 in the denominator, which is a prime number, remember it is applicable for prime numbers in the denominator. So 17. If I have p minus 2 factorial, which is 15 factorial, in that case the remainder will become equal to 1. P minus one factorial by P remainder is minus one. P 
p minus 2 factorial by p the remainder is plus 1 when 21 factorial is divided by 361 let's try and solve this i have 21 factorial i have 361 here 361 i know is 19 square so 19 into 19 21 factorial can be written as 21 into 20 into 19 into 18 factorial so i have two 19s here i have one 19 here and i have one 19 here so can I cancel the 19 out and then calculate the remainder? The answer is no. You know, it will be a blunder to do this. Let's take a very simple example. If I have, let's say 19 into 19 and if I have 19 into 2, can I cancel 19, 19 and say that 2 is the remainder? I hope you've understood the blunder that I'm talking about. Here, the answer is clearly 38 only, right? So what can I do here? Whenever I have k into a upon k into b and I have to find out the remainder, what I can do is I can take k common. So k is common. The remainder will be k into a upon b and what is whatever the remainder is here. So for example, in this case, you can take 19 common and then you can take 2 upon 19. What is the remainder in 2 upon 19? The remainder is 2. So 19 into 2 is 38. Similarly, in this case, what we will do? We'll take out one 19 common that will be as part of the remainder. So 19 has been eliminated. Now I'm solving 21 into 20 into 18 factorial divided by 19. This number gives two as the remainder. Basic remainder theorem, take individual remainder. 20 will give you remainder as one. 18 factorial will give you a remainder as minus one. Wilson's theorem, first part. Two into minus one is minus two. So the remainder is here it is minus 2 and here it is 19 so finally the remainder is minus 38 but the answer I must give in positive 361 minus 38 will become 323. Let's take this one 1 factorial plus 2 into 2 factorial plus 3 into 3 factorial it's a it's a very good pattern spotting problem think about it I can write 1 factorial as 2 factorial minus 1 factorial. I can write 2 into 2 factorial. So 2 can be written as 3 minus 1 into 2 factorial. So 3 into 2 factorial is 3 factorial minus 2 factorial. So the second term will become 3 factorial minus 2 factorial. Then you will have 4 factorial minus 3 factorial. Going on finally, 10 into 10 factorial can be written as 11 factorial minus 10 factorial. Right? So here the first term cancels, this term cancels. The first term, the second bit is remaining. From the last term, first bit will be remaining. So the finally it will become 11 factorial minus 1 factorial. I have to divide it by 11. Now 11 factorial divided by 11, you know, this is completely divisible. So the final remainder is minus 1. Right? The final remainder is minus 1. You can convert it to positive remainder as 10. Moving forward to the Chinese remainder theorem. Again, very, very interesting. One you know, theorem which is used to calculate the last two digits, a prominent one. Let's take a very simple example. You can read the text, you know, in your own time. Let me give you an example and I'll help you clarify with that example. 19 to the power 200. I have to calculate the last two digits. We have seen that last two digits is nothing but dividing a number by 100 and taking the remainder. Split this denominator into multiple of co-prime numbers. So 100 can be written as 25 into 4. 25 and 4 are co-prime. Step number 1. Step number 2. Divide this number which is 19 to the power 200. Let's call it n. Divide this number n individually by 25 and 4 and take remainders. So 19 to the power 200 divided by 25. 19 and 25 are co-prime. What is the Euler's number of 25? That will be 25 into 4 by 5. So that becomes 20. This number is a multiple of 20. So it will give you a remainder as 1. Right. So this number n can be written as, you know, divided by 25, I got 1 as the remainder. So I can write it as 25x plus 1. Similarly, if I divide this number by 4, what will happen? 19 upon 4 to the power 200. 19 divided by 4 remainder is minus 1. Minus 1 raised to the power 200 will give you plus 1. So with 4 also, it is going to give you a 1 as the remainder. So this number can be written as 4y plus 1. So what is the first number that satisfy both these equations that both these expressions that is 1. The general form will be LCM of the coefficients. So the coefficient of x is 25, coefficient of y is 4 into some variable k. 
so 1 plus 100 k with this number n can be represented as 1 plus 100 k so if you divide this number by 100 what will you get you will get 0 1 so the last two digits will become 0 1 i hope this is clear to you moving forward to the last bit which is binomial theorem we all know that you know this is how we represent the binomial theorem but how can i use binomial theorem to calculate remainders let us take one example to understand how binomial theorem is useful 25 to the power 10 divided by 576 25 can be written as 1 1 plus 24 raised to the power 10 and why only 24 the answer is very simple i have a 24 square in the denominator so i am taking that view and therefore expressing it this way let me now try and expand 1 plus 24 to the power 10 so 10 c 0 1 to the power 0 24 to the power 10 plus 10 c 1 1 to the power 1 24 to the power 9 going on till 10 c 8 1 to the power 8 24 to the power 2 10 c 9 1 to the power 9 24 to the power 1 10 c 10 1 to the power 10 24 to the power 0 think about it i am dividing this number by 24 square all these numbers till 10 c 8 will have higher powers 24 square or higher hence these numbers will be completely divisible giving us zero remainder what is remaining is the last two terms now if you have a look at the last term this is nothing but 10 c 10 which is 1 1 to the power 10 which is 1 and 24 to the power 0 which is 1 so the last term is anyways going to give you 1 as the remainder let's have a look at the second last term second last term 10 c 9 is 10 into 1 to the power 9 is 1 into 24 i have to divide this number by 24 into 24 remember i have 24 repeated here so let's take 24 common and let's take it out then i have 10 upon 24 clearly 10 is the remainder so the final remainder is 240 here and you have one from the last term so one so final remainder is 241 i hope this is clear to you with that we come to the end of remainders topic i hope you enjoyed it i am pretty sure insta is fun but you can watch the same video on youtube also at your own pace god bless you all thank you